Sawa so, daktar. Karibu. Jina langu ni Hadia Mwasiwa. Rais Uhuru Kenyatta amefanya ukaguzi kituo kipya cha mafuta cha Kipevu kaunti ya Mombasa ambacho ujenzi wake utakapokamilika kitakuwa kituo kikubwa zaidi cha mafuta barani Afrika. Rais katika ziara hiyo aliandamana na mabalozi mbalimbali na viongozi serikalini akiwemo waziri wa fedha ukuria tani. Let us all move to the front side kindly. Let's be a bit faster. All of us who are joining me here, we all move to the front side. As we welcome our principal guest and his visitor. And as we open the year, we are now here together as we come to inspect this new Kipevu oil terminal, which will go a huge distance towards ensuring that we are able to reduce not only the cost of fuel to our people, but also to ensure that Kenya is able to consistently have an adequate supply of fuel for our needs and our development needs and for our people. This terminal, once fully commissioned, as you heard from the minister, in a few weeks' time, will result in a saving of almost two billion shillings that we are currently paying every year because of demurrage occasioned by the long queues of vessels parked outside our harbor waiting to discharge their product. With the completion of this project, those delays will be a thing of the past and those benefits will directly relate to the pockets of our people. Na kwengineko bunge la seneti linatarajiwa kuandaa kikao maalum siku ya Jumanne wiki ijayo kuhusu mswada wa kubadilisha sheria za vyama vya kisiasa. Mswada huo ambao ulipitishwa na bunge la kitaifa unafaa kuwasilishwa kwenye bunge la seneti kwa mujibu wa katiba ikizingatiwa kuwa baadhi ya vipenge vyake vinagusia serikali za kaunti. Spika wa bunge la seneti Ken Lusaka amesema kamati kuhusu ratiba ya bunge itakutana watakutana hapo kesho ili kuweka mikakati ya kikao hicho maalum. The National Assembly is now headed to the Senate. I have already received a request from the leader of majority and minority uh, who have raised the requisite number for us to hold a special sitting on Tuesday next week. Um, but tomorrow, I will be holding a special House Business Committee meeting which will then give a, route map, a road map of what is going to happen so that nobody starts blaming or saying it's being delayed here because now that's the decision-making organ of the Senate. So I'll be chairing it tomorrow at 11 and from there we'll get a clear map on what is going to happen. But on Tuesday we're going to gazette for a special sitting where I will receive the, I will receive the, uh, the message from the National Assembly, uh, have it, uh, the first reading and commit it to, 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 the, to the committee. Waziri wa usalama wa ndani Dr. Fred Matiangi na mwenzake wa ardhi Farida Karonei leo wamefanya kikao cha faraha na wazee wa mtaa wa mabanda wa Mukuru kwa Njenga katika juhudi za kutafuta suluhu ya mzozo wa ardhi ambao umekuwa ukiendelea kwa muda mrefu. Matiangi ameahidi kuwa wataendelea na mazungumzo na kampuni ya Orbit Chemicals ambayo inamiliki hati miliki za sehemu hiyo ya ardhi pamoja na Wakenya ambao wamekuwa wakiishi pale ili kupata suluhu ya kudumu. the process of documenting the people who live there, documenting their parcels of land, auditing the titles which are there because as you know some titles have been issued to, to some of the residents there. So we want to audit everything so that we appreciate fully what is the scope of the problem, how many people have titles, how many are in the process of acquiring titles, and how many do not have. So that in the end, we regulars and everybody who lives there ought to have a title to the land they live on. Cessation of any uh, of those activities going on at Mukuru Kwanjenga. The surveying and everything else is going to be handled by the government alone. We will engage immediately with the, the landowners because we respect property rights. 
we will talk with opit chemicals we have already opened up conversations with them and the government is going to remain engaged with them to see how we find a lasting solution this is not the first time we are doing that this is how we sorted out waitiki in mombasa this is how we have sorted out challenges in other parts of the country where we find their landowners on whose land the you know members of the public have, have, have occupied so we work with them so that we protect their property rights on the one hand while on the other also we look at the livelihoods and the settlement of our people na sasa tuzamie hili mtazamaji ambapo wazee wa Borana wametoa majina matano ya wagombea wa nafasi mbalimbali walioidhinishwa na wazee hao kwa uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka huu. Kwenye mkutano uliohudhuriwa na wakilishi wa sita za jamii ya Waborana, mwenyekiti wa baraza hilo Abdullahi Haj Gonjobe amesema sasa walioidhinishwa wanapata uungwaji mkono kutoka kwa jamii hiyo kikamilifu. Aliyekuwa gavana wa Isiolo Godana Doyo ameidhinishwa kuwa nia ugavana kupambana na gavana wa sasa Muhammad Kuti anayetoka kwenye jamii mimi ya sukuye mwakilishi wa kike wa kaunti ya Isiolo Rehema Jaldesa pia ameidhinishwa kupigania kiti hicho aliyekuwa spika wa kaunti ya Isiolo Muhammad Tupi naye ameidhinishwa kuwania ubunge wa Isiolo Kusini huku no Muhammad Ibrahim akiidhinishwa kuwania useneta na kumenyana na Fatuma Gudulu Council of Elders wa jamii ya Borana kwa ile confidence ambaye eh, wame kwa na mimi na wakanipatia nafasi kama mgombea kiti ya uh, women rep kwa mara ya pili. Uh, nafikiri mimi sio mgeni sana kwa watu wa Isiolo. Sijabagua watu wa Isiolo, nimetumikia uh, watu wa Isiolo, nimehakikisha nilifanya equity kwa ile distribution ya ile resources kidogo ambaye nilikuwa naye. Zaidi ya hiyo niliweza kupigania haki ya watu wa Isiolo wamekubaliana na sisi wako pamoja na sisi na wao ni ni ni, ni Mameduka uh, Usentene na Yunis Madei. Kwa hivyo yule amebaki kuwa governor wetu wa Isiolo ni governor uh, his excellency governor Doyo aliyekuwa um, uh, uh, governor wetu uh, uh, our first governor tumemrudisha yeye kwa sababu uh, tunajua yeye kuna maendeleo si tumekubali yale ambao ameamuliwa na BC tumekubali endorsement kama aspirants wa viti zote ambazo zimetajwa hapa leo we have accepted and we are ready and solid to lead our people to Canaan as they say tuko tayari na mtazamaji sasa tujikite kwenye masuala ya nidhamu. Shule ya humu nchini zikiendelea kufunguliwa kwa muhula wa tatu. Kamishna wa kaunti ya Embu Abdullahi Galgalo ameonya wanafunzi kuwa hatua za kisheria zitachukuliwa kwa yeyote yule atakayejihusisha na kuchoma shule. Kamanda wa polisi kaunti hiyo Daniel Rukunga alithibitisha kuwa shule nne zilikumbwa na visa vya moto huku wanafunzi wanne wakiendelea na kesi kotini. Maafisa hao salama waliongea katika shule ya All Saints Kigari kaunti ndogo ya Embu Kusini katika hafla ya uzinduzi wa kujenga madarasa hamsini na nane kwa shule hamsini na moja katika kaunti ya Embu. Galgalo alisema mpango huu umefadhiliwa na serikali ya kitaifa kwa shilingi milioni So sometimes they struggle, they have paid fees and then now they are told to come and pay for the damages that unfortunately some of you never even participate and then wakati unaenda kuchukua petroli unakuja kuchoma dormitory just imagine their fellow colleagues of yours or students inside those dormitory and they are burned to death how will you feel that you are the one who killed so and so who killed the girl in form 2 god forbid who killed the boy in form 1 who... how will you feel god forbid it has not happened But some years back it happened in some schools and so many school the children burned to death. Please be very careful. For the burning of schools. Shule in zimekuwa na unrest. Na tumekamata wanafunzi nane. Saa hii wako kotin kesi inaendelea hatujui the outcome of the court. Maybe wataishia kwa misochieng kurekebisha tabia. Kwa mwestocheng ni wapi? Prison, prison. Sawa, cheng. 
Ni utaopokea? Na sasa kwenye taarifa iliyowatamausha wakazi wa kaunti ya Kiambu, wasiwasi umewagubika wakazi wa kijiji cha Ngochi katika kaunti ndogo ya Gidhunguri kaunti ya Kiambu baada ya mti wa mugumo kushika moto kwa njia tatanishi. Kwa mujibu walioshuhudia kisa hicho, mti huo ulikuwa kwenye boma moja, ulishika moto mida ya usiku na wanasema mti huo ulichomeka kwa kasi mno, kisa ambacho sio cha kawaida ikizingatiwa kuwa mti huo uhifadhi maji mengi. Wakazi walijitokeza na kuzima moto huu watu hawachezi na mti huu kulingana na mbira za kikuyu na hata kuni kama msemaji alivyosema hata kuni isipokuwa wale wa kinda mama wakogwe kabisa ambayo wangekujuhusua kuchukua hizo kuni wengine hawawezi hata ama kukata hata watoto wenyewe wanajua mti kwa mgumu ni muhimu kwa sababu ilikuwa ni kama kanisa la wakikuyu walikuwa naombea hapa chini wanaangalia kirinyaga wanaomba Mungu wao na wakitoka hapa huo inanyesha kwa hivyo walikuwa naamini maombi hayo yamefika kulingana na ule mti wa Mungu na mtazamaji kama wasemavyo kistaajabu ya Musa utayaona ya Firauni. Twende kwenye kaunti ya Kilifi mtazamaji ambapo kamishna wa kaunti ya Kilifi Kutwa Olaka ametoa wito kwa wakazi wa kaunti ya Kilifi kujitokeza kwa wingi kupokea chanjo ya corona. Wito huu umetolewa wakati maeneo mengi yameripotiwa kusajili ongezeko la watu wanaopokea chanjo hiyo haswa baada ya kulipotiwa kwa kisa cha Omicron mwaka jana. Angalia zile statistics ya wale watu ambao wamechanjwa wamechanjwa katika kaunti hii ni chini sana. Tulikuwa tunatarajia adults watu wazee zaidi ya 1700 uh, lakini kwa wakati huu wale wamepata chanjo ambayo uh, ni full ni watu 1044 peke yao kwa 44000 uh, kati ya 1700 uh, na mkiona hiyo ni idadi yenye iko chini sana Tukisalia kwenye masuala yanayofungamana na chanjo ya corona, kiwango cha mapokezi ya chanjo ya corona katika eneo la Mwingi kimeongezeka kufuatia kuripotiwa kwa kisa cha kwanza cha Omicron na agizo la Wizara ya Afya kwamba hakuna huduma za serikali bila cheti cha chanjo hiyo. Kwa mujibu wa mkuu wa afya ya umma na chanjo kaunti ndogo ya Mwingi ya Akiti Joffrey Muthui katika muda wa miezi miwili iliyopita, idadi ya wanaopokea chanjo ya corona imeongezeka maradufu. Hata hivyo kumekuwa na dhana potofu kuhusiana na chanjo hiyo huku Muthui akitoa wito kwa wakazi wa mwingi kujitokeza kwa wingi kupokea chanjo hiyo. I received uh, AstraZeneca Oxford uh, first first dose back in October. I received mild side effects like sweating, nothing much. And there was no other associated illnesses or any other problems. Later on I received the second dose back in December. Then it was good, it was all right, not painful. There was no any other associated problems. Nimekuja kudungwa sindano ya corona na nimefurahia sana kudungwa. Nimeona wanawake ndio wanahudhuria kwa, kwa wingi. Mbato wanaume mbato wanja kuwa wengi. Na waimisa wanaume wanzangu wakuja pia wadungwa sindano. Ni muhimu sana kudungwa hiyo sindano. Since uh, Omicron virus was uh, detected, we have seen an increase in the number of uh, people who are getting vaccination. Then uh, the motivating factor is that uh, people are fearing to get infected with that virus. I would like to urge the communities who have not yet been vaccinated to get this uh, vaccine.
actually vaccine is an additional prevention measure the other one being face masking that is hand washing na kwenye taarifa nyingine inayofungamana na hiyo hii leo msongamano wa magari umeshuhudiwa kwa zaidi ya kilomita 30 kuanzia mpaka wa Kenya na Uganda Malaba hadi Bungoma madereva wa malori wakiandamana kupinga kulazimishwa kupimwa hali yao ya virusi vya corona nchini Uganda baada ya kupimwa nchini Kenya Uli Lusige alizuru mpakani na kuandaa taarifa ifuatayo Msongamano wa Malori umeshuhudiwa kwa makumi ya kilomita kutoka mpaka wa Kenya na Uganda katika eneo la Malaba kupita kaunti ya Bungoma kuelekea upande wa Buye kwa kile ambacho kimetajwa kwamba madereva wanasema wamegadhabishwa na hatua ya serikali ya Uganda kuwataka tena kupimwa virusi vya corona wanapoingia katika taifa la Uganda licha ya kuwa na vieti vya kuonyesha kwamba wameweza kupimwa katika taifa la Kenya na vieti hivyo pia vinatambulika na jamii ya Afrika Mashariki ukipenda East African Community na wanapofika mpakani Malaba wanatakiwa kupima tena na kulipa pa kima cha shilingi 3600 ambazo ni takriban dola 30 pesa za kimarekani ambazo wanatakiwa kulipa upande wa Uganda ili kuweza kupimwa tena licha ya kwamba wengi wao hawapimwi wanapatiwa tu vieti vya kuonyesha kwamba wameweza kulipa fedha hizo na ndiposa kuanzia siku ya Jumatatu waliamua kuweza kutoendelea na shughuli zao na kusimamisha magari yao jinsi yalivyopangwa kwa njia ndefu na foleni ndefu ili kuweza kugadhabishwa na kuonyesha hisia kali kwamba wanapinga hatua ambayo taifa la Uganda limeweza kuchukua na kusema kwamba kila ambacho naomba ni taifa hilo kuweza kuondoa sheria hiyo kwa sababu wameweza kupimwa katika taifa la Kenya na wana vieti maalum ambao vinaonyesha wazi kwamba waliweza kupimwa na hawana virusi vya corona mbona sasa iweje wanapofika katika mpaka wanaambiwa tena wapime upande wa Uganda na tofauti na jinsi e, vieti ambavyo wanavyo vinavyowaruhusu kuingia upande wa Uganda na kurejea siku 14 taifa la Uganda wanaweza kupatiwa vile vieti ambavyo ni vya siku saba na kutakiwa kuweza kulipa zile shilingi 1300 kwa hivyo wamesema wataendelea na mgomo huu kije kiangazi au kije mvua kwa sababu wanasema hawana njia nyingine ya kuweza kupata fedha hizo na wanahisi kwamba huenda wananyanyaswa na taifa la Uganda nitakuwa nazungumza na dereva mmoja hapa karibu kidogo tu kwa sekunde 30 tufahamishe jina lako na umekuwa hapa kwa muda wa siku ngapi nitakushikia mimi naitwa Joseph Wekesa Haemba. Kwa kweli mimi sio dereva wa lori lakini nimegadhabishwa tu na mambo haya ya foreign easy trailer sababu ajali zinkuwa mingi hapa. Kuna mkwaruzano wa magari madogo, pikipiki. Kisha yani ni afueni sababu watoto wetu wamerejea shule haswa wale wa kike. Waangalikuwa kwa kweli hapa sijui inge kwa vipi. Tafadhali taifa letu wacha tuone tunaweza kuwakifisha maneno vipi sababu taifa la Uganda kama kama certificate zipo hapo madereva mbona wanyanyaswe wengine wameanza kuomba chakula bwana asante ah, labda wamekuwa hapa siku ngapi tunafahamishwa wamekuwa hapa tangia siku ya Jumatatu hapa wamekuwa tanzia siku ya Jumatatu na gari lilipoegeshwa mtu hata kuoga ni shida wajua ni wakati wa kiangazi maji wanayanunua vyakula imekuwa sio haba bwana gari tena sana sasa hawa wenzetu tafadhali serikali zijue vile zinaweza kuwasaidia. Asante sana bwana mtangazaji. Asante bingwa. Kwa hivyo ni wazi kwamba itachukua muda mrefu maana yake tunafahamishwa kuna mkutano ambao umeratibiwa kufanyika hapo kesho baina ya taifa la Uganda na Kenya kuweza kutafuta suluhu la kudumu dhidi ya msongamano huu na kama ikiwezekana taifa la Uganda litaweza kutoa ama kuondoa hiyo amri mpya kuweza kuwataka maderevo walopimwa upande wa Kenya pia kupimwa upande wa Uganda. Lakini changamoto kubwa inakuwa ni kwamba ni mizigo ambayo mingi ya mizigo hiyo inaharibikia hapa wengi kwa mbeba vyakula ambavyo sasa vinaharibika na wanalilia taifa la Uganda liweze kutafuta njia mbadala ya kuweza kusuluhisha mzozo huo kando na hayo tumefahamishwa katika mpaka upande wa Busia kule Malori yanaruhusiwa kupita lakini yale maru, Malori ambayo yanasafirisha mafuta pamoja na aina fulani ya vyuma vinavyoitwa vinavyotumika sana sana kuweza kutengeneza simiti ambavyo tu ndivyo vinavyoruhusiwa kuingia upande wa Uganda pamoja na mafuta ili kuweza kuzuia upungufu wa mafuta upande huo lakini mizigo hii mingine katika kivukio cha Malaba inaendelea kusalia imekwama hapa hadi wale madereva wanasema lazima taifa la Uganda liweze kuondoa amri hiyo ya kuwataka kupimwa tena ndipo watakubali kuingia tena kwenye malori yao na kuendelea na safari yao katika taifa la Uganda na mataifa mengine jirani kama vile DRC Kongo, Sudan, Rwanda pamoja na Burundi.
Na mtazamaji kama alivyorefu ili lusigi ndivyo hali ilivyokuwa kwenye mpaka wa Kenya na Uganda hii leo uh, kutokana na kupimwa kwa virusi vya corona. Sasa tuzamie kwenye masuala ya kulima ambapo wakulima wakuu wa majani chai watano kutoka kwenye kampuni tano kaunti ya Kirinyaga wamechochea ususiaji wa majani chai kutoka kwa wakulima 30 waliowasilisha kesi kwenye mahakama kuu kupinga mabadiliko ya sheria za majani chai. Kulingana na watano hao kesi hiyo iliyoko mahakamani iliwasilishwa kufuatia manufaa ya kibinafsi na ime kandamiza wakulima na kuwanyima fursa ya kupokea nyongeza ya malipo iliyopendekezwa na serikali kuu. Aidha wameonya kuiondoa kesi hiyo mahakamani ili kuwaruhusu wakulima wa majani chai kutoka kaunti ya Kirinyaga kunufaika na matunda ya bidia. <tos> Wasipoondoa hiyo makesi ambapo iko kotini watasababisha mukurima akasirike na anaesha sheria mkononi lakini kambura tunjafika hapo tunaambia eh, all t correction centers hawa watu wasilete manjani yao katika hisho Bank centers. centers actually putting this notice to the old directors who has taken us to the courts without our permission that if they don't withdraw these cases by tomorrow their teeth will not be corrected anywhere in all the bank centers within the catchment of uh, the Maita, Kemunye, Kangaita, Monunga and Dima. Tea factories zile ziko huku Kirinyaga kuna high court hapa Kirinyaga iko Kerugoya there is a high court station in Kirinyaga but the former directors decided to take the the cases to high court station in Embu we are imploring the judiciary the judicial service commission specifically the chief justice madam Kome angalie ni nini ilitendeka how comes tea factories zile ziko Kirinyaga kesi inapelekwa Embu na wakati siasa za uchaguzi mkuu wa Agosti zinapopamba moto wanawake zaidi ya 20 wamejitokeza kuania wadhfa wa ugavana katika ulingo wa kisiasa nchini huku wawili wao wakiwa wametoka kwenye kaunti ya Taita Taveta wanawake kaunti hiyo wametangaza kuwa wana uwezo wa kunyakua uongozi katika nyadhfa mbalimbali kaunti hiyo ukiwemo wadhfa wa ugavana Ezon Kimari na taarifa hiyo kutoka Taita Taveta tumekubaliana kwa kauli moja tunangangana tunatia bidii zetu tunatia juhudi zetu zote kusema ni nafasi ya mama hapo mbele huenda tukakubaliana sisi sote tuseme moja tosha kwa hivyo kwa mfano mimi Rachel aseme patience tosha ama mimi niseme Rachel tosha ila tu tuhakikishe kwamba mama amepata nafasi ya uongozi katika kaunti hii hii ndio kauli ya waoniadi wawili wa kike wa ugavana Taita Taveta kwa sasa wakisema imefika wakati wanawake kuongoza Taita Taveta baada ya miaka kumi ya wanaume Naibu Gavana Majala Mlagui anasema wanawake wamedhihirisha uwezo wa kuongoza katika ngazi kuu za kisiasa. Our country still has some form of patriarchy where it is believed that the form of good leadership has to have the face of a man and sometimes also a senior man. However, I believe that in the last five years we've started seeing a lot more vocal women and this is now giving a lot of example to the communities that indeed women in leadership make a difference, make a change. Aidha wanawake wanashikilia kwamba mawimbi makali ya kisiasa kutoka kwa wapinzani wao hasa wanaume hazitazima ndoto zao kama wanawake za kutoa uongozi wa kiti cha ugavana kaunti hiyo vitisho ni vingi haswa kwa wanawake wanawake sisi tutatusiwa kila mahali leo hii katika gazeti moja ni muona wameweka wanawake ambao wanawania kiti cha ugavana katika kaunti katika kaunti mbalimbali mbali nchini Kenya na mmoja akasema hapa tunaona tu kama ni wengine ni educated slay queens. Tunasema sisi matusi hayatutishi kabisa. Sina wasiwasi kabisa kwa sababu nina maono na nimeweka agenda ambazo ni za mwananchi. Kawaida siasa uhitaji pesa za kutosha ili kufanikisha kampeni, jambo ambalo mara nyingi hutatiza vyama na pia wagombeaji wa viti mbalimbali vya kisiasa hasa wanawake. 
Raundi hii tumejipa kama ni mbaya kama ni noma sisi tunasema kama ni pesa basi pia sisi tunazo lakini hatutaki kuwahada watu wataita tafeta tunataka kusema kwamba kila mmoja auze sera zake watu wazikumali sera kwa sababu tuangalie miaka mitano ijayo hii county itakuwa wapi kwa kusema kweli hata ukiwa na pesa ngapi duniani ni kama kufuru unapoanza kufikiria pesa zinaweza zikakuchangua hadi sasa wanafaa wa juu zaidi wa kisiasa ambapo wanawake wanashikilia Taita Taveta ni ule wa naibu gavana ambapo inadaiwa nafasi hiyo imewanyima uhuru wa kazi. Ndio maana tunasema hii nafasi ya ugavana kuwa naibu kila wakati kwa kina mama haitatufaa sisi. Maana kwa mara nyingi wanapewa nafasi lakini ile nafasi utendaji kazi wao ni duni sana. Kwa sababu hapa tumesikia madhulu, tumesikia dhulma nyingi sana kuhusiana na anayekalia kiti hiki kwa hivi sasa majala mla huyu kila sisi tuna sisi sote tunamwelewa tunaelewa yale mambo ambayo yamepitia tunaelewa zile injustices ile mwanamke aliyopitia yeye I'm not satisfied that women should only be at the deputy governor seat. I don't think that that is the the pinnacle of the success that we should be looking at. Like I said previously, we should be aiming for president of the country. Um, where a woman may decide to go to a deputy governor seat, it is dependent on the dynamics of that particular area as well as how she would want to provide a service delivery or service manifesto in combination with someone else. Rachel Mwakazi na Patience Nyange sio wanawake wa kwanza kuwania nafasi ya gavana Taita Taveta huku B Jacinta Mwatela akikosa ushindi mara mbili mwaka 2013 na mwaka 2017 dhidi ya wanaume. Tukubaliana kwa kauli moja kwamba kaunti ya Taita Taveta yahitaji ajenda mpya, yahitaji sura mpya, yahitaji mtazamo mpya, yahitaji mafanikio mapya. Na sisi sote kwa hivi sasa tunakubaliana kwamba ni nafasi ya mama. In politics what we want to do is support the most able candidate. And while I believe that there's very many able women candidates, I want to see who the women candidates are out there all of the candidates in one pool and we will make the decision then. Hadi sasa ni wanawake wawili pekee waliojitokeza kuwania nafasi ya ugavana Taita Taveta miongoni mwa waniadi 11 waliojitokeza. Hezron Kimari Kitty News Taita Taveta na mtazamaji taarifa hiyo ni pafusa ya kuchukua pumziko fupi ila nakusi usibanduke ulipo nitakuwa narejea na taarifa zaidi ndani ya muda sokwa mrefu